Hello, and welcome to Writers and Books Visiting Author Series. My name is Dan Hurd. I'm the Director of Adult Programs. Writers and Books is a nonprofit literary arts center in Rochester, New York. We offer readings, workshops, and literary programming for people of all ages and backgrounds. You can find more information at our website, wab.org. Please say hello in the chat and let us know you're there. Feel free to submit questions to the chat or Q&A function. Books are available through our bookstore ampersand books. I'll put the link in the chat. Writers and books would like to call attention to the complex and troubled history of the lands on which we live and work. We are hosting this event from the unceded ancestral homelands of the Onondagwa or the people of the Great Hill. In English, they are known as the Seneca people or the keeper of the Western door. We're so happy to have Tu and Das with us tonight. First, we'll hear him read, then he'll be in conversation with Tony Liuzzi. Tony Liuzzi is a poet, critic, and art maker whose books of poems include Radiant Losses, The Burning Door, and Meditation Archipelago. A staff writer for the books section of the Brooklyn Rail, Tony's interviews and criticisms have been widely published. Tu and Das is a Bengali poet currently living in the US. Over the last 20 years, his poetry, criticism, short stories, and opinion columns have been published in Bangladesh and West Bengal, India. He is the author of eight poetry books in his na native language. He left his home country, Bangladesh, in 2016 and was granted asylum in the US in 2021. He is a visiting scholar at Carnegie Mellon University and a writer in residence at in the City of Asylum's Writer's Sanctuary Program. Das's work has appeared in Words Without Borders, The Bear Life Review, The Offing, Epiphany, and Immigrant Report. Exile Poems in the Labyrinth of Homesickness comprises 65 poems written in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, after Das was forced to flee from his home in Bangladesh. The collection chronicles his innermost thoughts, insuppressible fears, and poignant observations as he navigates a new life in exile and continues to fight for freedom of expression. Tuan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Dan. Uh, and thanks to writers and books. And uh, also I want to say uh, thanks to the audience of tonight. And I appreciate that you uh, are all supporting uh, my first poetry book uh, in the US. Uh, from Rochester, New York, or and other places. And before uh, I read from Exile Poems, uh, I want to uh, present some information about Bangladesh and myself that relate uh, to the background of this book. It's like of this book. Let's see if maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I'm going to uh, do a screen share. I hope you can see. Just to give me one second. Just excuse me. Uh, it seems like a uh, technical problem. There. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, uh, like 95, as I said, I, I, I am going to present some information about Bangladesh. So, like 1947, so my home country, Bangladesh, was a, a part of British ruled India. So, and the Indian subcontinent was divided in the basis of religions. Uh, India and Pakistan. So at that time, Bangladesh became a section uh, of pa Pakistan called East Pakistan and the current uh, Pakistan called West Pakistan. So West Pakistan tried to suppress us and they took our assets and money to develop West Pakistan's estates and infra infrastructure. Uh, 
So there are like 2000 miles uh, like difference between these two part of the country. In the middle, it was India. So it was uh, like a totally uh, uh, very hard. So we, do, we didn't have any similarity uh, with the language or culture or anything. So even Bangladesh's, uh, the Bangladesh's own the president, presidential election of 1970, uh, instead of transferring the power to the elected uh, officials, West Pakistani political leaders started military campaign. And that led to a civil war of 1971. And then we own and a new country uh, emerged in the world called Bangladesh. So an Islamic local uh, political party called Jamaat Islam, they held Pakistani army to kill 3 million people and other crimes against humanity. So the member of that political party, uh, that Islamic party, were basically like our neighbors. So like they betrayed with us. So in 1985, I was born. And around that time, a military dictator announced Islam is the extraterrestrial. And the money was coming from Saudi Arabia or other uh, Islamic countries to make the society, uh, like Bangladeshi society, more Islamic. I was seeing those changes when I was growing up. So throughout the 90s, uh, the society became more Islamic. That started to contradict to my um, Bengali heritage and culture. And I was growing up and realized that, uh, like we, means like my family uh, members, we are being treated differently than other uh, people of the other religion. So because my family practice Hindu religion, so it was like a big shock for me. So, and there in 2000, there was a general election in Bangladesh and the Jamaat Islam, I was talking about that political party before that, that party, the Jamaat Islam formed a pact with the main opposition party and they came in power together. So but they were like a center, one is center uh, right wing and another one was totally right wing. And we, the secular uh, cultural activists and other secular people, uh, we, we are surprised to, even the general people who are surprised to see the, this Nosharas war criminals uh, became the ministers or lawmakers of, of our country. And right after that election, there was a religious minority pers persecution throughout Bangladesh because they had hate in their mind uh, because they didn't able to come in power before, but the haters, they thought the Hindus give vote to uh, another political party. The Hindus uh, do not give vote to Jamaat Islam. So that was the hatred and the anger uh, and they started Hindu persecution in Bangladesh. And Hindu houses were burned down, and secular or the political uh, active, activists were killed, and also Hindu women were raped, the temples were burned. So to protest uh, this atrocity, uh, I published my own magazine called The Wild. I was only 16 years old, and, and I wrote, and other open-minded writers, uh, they wrote, articles about various political and social issues, such as against religious persecution, also Islamist fundamentalism, and also promoting peace and harmony between two religious communities in Bangladesh. So then the coalition government that I was talking about the opposition, opposition government, uh, like me, Bangladesh Nationalist Party, the Jamaat Islam, who, uh, who became a coalition government, they formed a political elite police force, some kind of like a military police, like paramilitary, uh, called Rapid Action Battalion or RAP, to get rid of opposition leaders or activists from the states. And this political elite uh, police force 
killed hundreds of political activists and also hundreds of political activists were kidnapped and disappeared by them. And this political police organization was awarded the independence award by the government. That is the like highest honorary award of Bangladesh. So I started writing and publishing against them in my magazine. And I printed magazine, I, magazines and leaflet, and I distributed them. So then in 2006, I was basically illegally, illegally kidnapped by this reproduction battalion uh, and I was detained for nearly 10 hours. And I was beaten for four hours, four hours at, at uh, 8 p.m. to 12 uh, a.m. And uh, I was blindfolded and I was released after agreeing with them that I will leave that uh, area, I means my home city, uh, Borishal. So I left to Borishal and uh, after six months, and there was a general election and that coalition government lost the election and I, was, I came back to my city again. Since 2013, the political party who led, led our uh, liberation war of 1971, they started a trial against those who are criminals and the writers and activists supported that trial. So these writers and activists, they formed human chain, they staged uh, street drama, they chanted slogan, they arranged candlelight vigils. Millions of people joined in this protest and support that government. So that protest spread all the main cities in Bangladesh. And I joined in my hometown and organized to bring people in the march and gave a speech and read poetry. So Islamic political activists, uh, like, there are different uh, Islamic political group, groups or uh, parties, but basically at the end of the day, they basically work for each other. So, so there are one uh, Islamic political party, uh, they started a protest against us and they supplied our name to the local militant outfits like Al Qaeda and ISIS. So, Al Qaeda and ISIS started to publish the names of these protest leaders, organizers, and also the writers who are, on, who, who are online or offline supporters and the, and the organizers. So, they, pub, they labeled us like a, we are atheists, we are anti religious, we are anti Islamist. They labeled us to justify our. Uh, killing. So they published hit list and they started killing. Like basically, Al Qaeda was killing all the writers, and the ISIS war was uh, killing all the uh, community le leaders of different religious groups. So in the result, uh, total total more than uh, more than fifty people were killed, uh, including a dozen of uh, activist and atheist writers. And then uh, also the writers were uh, being arrested by the police because the government tried to come down the Islamist. So all this happening and then basically my name uh, published by uh, Al-Qaeda. But before that, uh, my one of the best friend, he was basically disappeared uh, in 2014 and he never come back yet. So then 2015, my name published by uh, Al Qaeda, and I went to uh, police. And instead of helping, they took my writing and password of social media and following me. So I left my hometown, Borishal, and I understood uh, the leaders of political party whom we supported for the trial. They are not going to help us. Even police are not going to help us. So that go so we realized basically the government made us uh, a scapegoat to remain in power. And then basically I decided to leave immediately Borishal. And I went to different cities and kept myself uh, low profile. And even I kept my identity uh, hidden because my name and photo was appeared on the newspaper and TV with other writers uh, regularly. So then 2016, 
uh, I applied and was accepted uh, by English language and literature department of Carnegie Mellon University. And also I was accepted by City of Asylum to join their uh, writer sanctuary program in Pittsburgh. So that was basically uh, initial uh, background. I think now I'm going to read poetry. So I'm going to read uh, from Exile Poems, a book I began writing on my first day in Pittsburgh. Um, at first, I'm going to talk about the talk about this poem. This is the Exile Poem number two. So I, as I said, I left Bangladesh in uh, first of April, and I was at Bangladesh airport and completed my uh, immigration proceedings. And I was waiting for boarding. And I called a few trustworthy friends, but they, they thought I was uh, pranking on them because on 1st of April, 1st uh, of April is April full day, you know? So people do prank to each other. Uh, and so I gave up. After three calls, they said, oh, you are pranking. So then I gave up. So. Then at Abu Dhabi airport, I felt uh, my nervousness because I knew I am leaving the country for a, a long time. Uh, so then with the uncertainty come up with that thought, I felt um, vulnerable. I was looking for any like a familiar face at Abu Dhabi airport, maybe just I can talk with someone. So this is the, this is, this poem is about that uh, feeling. I wrote it in Pittsburgh after coming the first day of Pittsburgh, something like that. Exile poems too. And then I did leave my country. I abandoned everything, my entire contemptible past, passing on my journey, the silent sky, the river of fear and the farmland, full of the harvest of death. When I saw those who are sleeping at midnight in the Abu Dhabi Air International Airport, I thought of walking them to say, you are my own, each and every one of you. But my restless feet pressing down on the constantly moving escalator found no opportunity to pause. It's also like due to that torture, I have problem in my, uh, to my uh, right leg. So it was very hard for constantly uh, keep going for a couple of hours. Still, I have that problem. Now I'm going to talk about uh, example poem number 17. So in my early days in Pittsburgh, I was writing all day long. So I, I got uh, two years writer in residency program at City of Asylum. That means that two year, I was just a writer, full-time writer, you know, so it was a dream job. So at night, sometimes I saw the dark sky uh, from my study room. I felt the sky, sometimes I felt the sky is very low or maybe crashing down. And I felt uh, lonely. And I didn't want to go to a bar or any events. So I needed to, I just needed a, like a walk. So I started to take short walk in the main streets of neighborhood in night. Uh, sometimes I was going to the river at the evening too. Excel poem 17. Everyone has accepted my absence with easy now. I am sure the radio no longer runs in my room. I used to fear the darkness of night. Now I trust it. My friends here tell me don't go out after dark, but I relay on the unknown lurking on the streets. I am a baby learning a new language from the night. Here no other worldly, beautiful butterfly burst into my room to attack me suddenly. The breeze from the 
Allegheny River announces that all rivers are the same. It keeps my memories of distanced railway stations alive. Uh, here I talked about I am a baby learning a new language from night. Yeah, I, I think I was learning a few languages, means uh, learning English and also learning how if starting everything from the beginning here. So it was a try to communicate other people. It is hard to communicate with other people, not only here, everywhere. Now I'm going to talk about uh, Excel poems number uh, 22. So like I went to the, all the pub, bar or restaurants in my neighborhood. Uh, where I can go, you know? so in my neighborhood uh, to see uh, what they have or how they are different. Uh, I'm talking about my, like after coming here in 2016 or 2017, these poems are written uh, between 2016 to 2018. So I went to all the pub, bar and restaurants in my neighborhood to see what they have or how they're different and who are, the people go there and who are the owners i was so curious so here is an like irish pub near uh, my this apartment and I, I ate a lot there and also like i uh, like to watch a movie at the theaters so this poem is about uh, those memories exile poems 22 in the Monterey pub, I met a young Jewish guy. Both his parents fled from Russia years ago. Then we went to Roa House Cinema to watch a film by Federico Fellini. When we left, we cut through Arsenal Park. He logged into Tinder on his phone and showed me a photograph of a woman I know. I smiled fleetingly. I did not meet him again. I have not seen my dearest writer friend in many years. He left home one afternoon. No one knows what happened to him. Now I'm going to talk about uh, example points number 28. Uh, like there are a lot of things in life we communicate every day with them. And I think there are a lot of things uh, we, we lose communication with them. So life is about meeting with uh, new people and making connections. And life is also about making connections with um, nature, books, river, uh, gardening, a movie, music, or uh, theories, or other, other valuables. It depends on person to person. But any, anywhere, uh, I go, I can make connections with the readers, book lovers or writers, a journalist by my writing. And I think that is the purpose of art too, the connecting people, each other. Though I feel like uh, in, in, in capitalist uh, America, our life is very busy uh, and poetry cannot uh, obtain, enter in our life, but end of the day for a moment, I want to sit with myself and just want to be calm, not controlled by other people for getting paid or something, you know? So, Excel Poems 28. I am on the other side of the world. Despite this, nor for a moment do I consider myself disconnected in that sense. But everyone has a personal form of alienation. I walk past the cafe when someone pushes the door open to emerge outside. Love songs hurled onto the road. I overheard what they were saying about me. He was en en enraptured himself with poetry. I feel I am not a stranger in this city. I feel I am not a stranger in this city. I don't consider myself disconnected in that sense, but everyone as a personal form of alienation. 
So in in my poem, uh, there is a one time, but I, I just uh, said that twice. I feel I am not a stranger in this city because I I feel I feel that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Now I'm going to talk about uh, Excel poem Snap 45. Uh, I feel when I read this poem, I became very uh, confident. It's other musical artist uh, or musician that said me once before. <laughs> so basically, uh, one day uh, I woke up and I felt I am still at the same place, like at my bed. Uh, at this apartment or uh, at the same neighborhood or uh, at the like, uh, same part of the city, I cannot go outside, or I cannot visit outside uh, of, the, of the US because of my immigration status. Uh, I am in the process of the uh, achieving freedom, but I had to compromise so many personal liberties also to get uh, this immigration benefit also. They cannot go anywhere. So then basically I wake up and I feel, I just opened my eyes and I felt like I am Icarus. Like I touched my shoulders like this and to find uh, wings. And uh, like Icarus is the one of the characters of Greek mythology and Greek mythology is one of the most old read mythology in my part of the world means like Bangladesh, India, Army, Pakistan. And so Icarus was the son of the architect and craftsman Daedalus who made confusing labyrinth. This is from this one basically got the idea of the subtitle of the book. And basically Icarus and his uh, father, uh, both are imprisoned in, uh, in the labyrinth by the King Minos, uh, in Create Island in Greece. And his father crafted him a pair of wings made of feathers and wax. And ignoring his father's uh, warning, he flew too close to the sun, to sun and the wax melted. See, the, and Icarus fell into the sea. Excel poems 45. I am Icarus. I was given those famous wings. They have fallen because of some lying sins. A pair of delicate silken wings. Even the scars marking where they are attached to my shoulders vanished long ago. Only when I wake up from an afternoon slumber for a moment, I remember reminded of my wings. When I touch my shoulders, I get no response. All I hear in my head is the sound of currents running through the waves of what is remembered like neurons that keep groping for memories of things that happened a million years ago. From the window, I gaze at the sky, a world before the solar eclipse. Like an agony, all I remember is I am Icarus. I was given those famous wings. Alas, I have lost my plump, fleshy, silken pair of wings. I think I have a small two other poems I'm going to uh, read quickly. Now I'm going to talk about uh, Excel poems number 54. Uh, in this poem, I'm talking about uh, the hibernation of winter days, uh, my plans, on the windowsill, bars, a stroll on, on next roof and drinking wine. I like wine. I like basically red wine. So you can see on the book cover uh, a photo of mine also drinking wine. Excel poems 54. On a snowy night, I feel the white pages of my poetry notebook with a snowfall of black letters. On a Skype, a friend from back home asked, do you drink a lot more on snow-covered days? No. In fact, on those days, American birds come to converse with the orchids by my windows. When they leave, I speak to myself.
now I'm going to talk about Excel poems number uh, 65. Uh, my every book uh, has an entrance poem, entrance poem and exit poems, in, even in my Bengali books. Uh, I published eight poetry books. And if, uh, so, so when I select the poems, I always keep that in my mind. The first poem would be my first poem or last poem. So, you know, maybe you all other poets, they do also. But I'm just saying about this book. So in this last poem of this book, uh, I say I am a Bengali. That means at first I should be known by my language, uh, home language Bengali. And Bengali people live in Bangladesh and the Indian uh, states of West Bengal, uh, Tripura, Ashram, and Jharkhand. I should be known by my uh, home language, uh, my own culture, my own uh, Bengali literature, song, music, art, and heritage. Our script is uh, Devnagri, left to right. We are very free-minded people. For centuries, people from different religions that lived uh, next to each other, like brothers and sisters, and we like to eat uh, fish, rice, and lentil, rasogolla, is our own sweet or dessert. We practice democracy and secularism. Secularism is the principle based in humanism rather than religion. I'm going to quick uh, read this poem quickly in uh, English and Bengali. By that you can hear uh, the some sounds of my home language. Then I, I will join with uh, Tony for conversation. Exile poem 65. Every day I ask myself, who are you? Every person I meet wants to know, are you Indian, Iraqi, Iranian, or Syrian? Me, I am a Bengali poet. Potiti diner sheshe, poshno jegeyothe amar mone, ke tumi? Potiti manush, jashanga dekha hai, shi amakata jante chai. তুমি কি ভারতীয় ইরাকি ইরানি বা সিরিয়ান আমি আমি একজন বাঙালি কবি নাও আই উইল বি ইন কনভারসেশন উইথ টনি হাই টনি হ্যালো হাউ আর ইউ আই এম ট্রাইং টু ডু ওকে গুড ওয়েল থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ ফর দ্যাট রিডিং এন্ড ফর দি ফর দ্য ভেরি জেনারাস এক্সপ্লেনেশনস অফ দ্য পোয়েমস um and i guess that might be a, a good way to begin uh the discussion and that is i do notice that you have a certain um commitment to or maybe even an anxiousness to explain your poems not just here in this situation but many of the poems are accompanied by footnotes that give context and so forth is is that something that comes from you or is that something that um uh the press wanted you to provide uh no it's, it, it came from me it came from me and as you know as i said i published uh, a few uh, poetry collections and uh, i i I, wrote, i write everything i write poetry novels everything but also i was the edi editor too so for that i feel like i understood understand about the uh, importance of the notes so like like think about this book was published uh is published by a press from Pittsburgh. So, but when this book is uh, being read by a person who is not uh, from Pittsburgh, maybe they will not uh, understand so many uh, things or points. That happens. So like, uh, I, like when I was working uh, about this book, I did experiment. I give these poems to my some friends to read. And they are basically uh, understood totally different way, that book. So then basically I realized uh, I, I need to add some notes, but then I, I can uh, talk about my, uh, those, those, land, those landmarks of Pittsburgh, what I like, and also those uh, places of my home city, what I am missing. Like, you know, so I, I try to use, uh, two or three 
Bengali sayings also. I, I like to put like, like those uh, small things to put from other languages or culture. So yeah, I think it is it was a on my part. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one of the things I noticed too, how involved were you with the translation of this book? Because it was translated by uh, Urunava Sina. Yes. Um, were you very involved in the translation into English or were you, uh, did, like you, was there a certain negotiation that went on with uh, Urunava? Um, yeah, so my translator, uh... Is basically uh, Arunabu Shingo, and uh, he is a uh, he regular, regularly translates my poems and other writings for last six years. And uh, I was basically introduced with him uh, by uh, Wars, Without, Wars Without Border magazine in 2017. And I think uh, Arunabu is right now is one of the I think uh, I don't know Sarah, but he is one of the uh, great, uh, greatest Bengali uh, trans uh, translator who like uh, translate from Bengali to English or English to Bengali, and he al he's also he's an uh, like associate professor of creative writing at Ashoka uh, University in Delhi. So yeah, so as I understood, like uh, that means as I trying to say, like he published sixty uh, books of translation all our literature, maybe novel, poetry. So he had a great experience. And as I understood, he understand my, uh, what I'm trying to say, he understand those right words. So it worked this way, basically I wrote uh, these poems in three different chunks. Like I wrote some, some in 2016, 17 and 18. And basically I sent these poems in three, uh, two, I think I just, uh, yeah, so in different chunks to send him to India. And he translated them and sent it to me. But that, that is, and after that, basically, I thought, okay, I need to put some notes and also uh, let other few uh, maybe edits. So then basically, I did that by myself here with other editors. And basically, I sent him back, oh, are you okay? You know, so make sure everything is good, cool. So yeah, that way it, it worked out. Oh, it sounds like a real collaborative effort. That's nice. Um, one of the things I also noticed about your writing is the, the, the really startling clarity of it. The, it's, um, there's a kind of almost disarming simplicity to the writing. It seems very direct. Uh, it's very clear. And yet uh, the complexities of your circumstances and your state of mind you allow that to speak for itself without, so even though there are a lot of notes at the end of the uh, of poems, um, the poems themselves seem to trust that whatever you're saying or feeling will, will come through clearly without a lot of explanation in the poems. So they're very, they're very kind of, most of them are very short poems, very clear, very image-based, um, and you feel very much like you're in a moment. Um, and I, I thought there was a real interesting tension between the calmness of the exterior of the poems. There's almost like a kind of sereneness on the top of the poems. And yet what you're writing about is so very um, tumultuous and potentially very um, um, disturbing for you. So it's like the, there's this, this tension between a kind of calm exterior and a kind of, um, turbulence that is kind of bubbling underneath. And I was wondering if you could speak to that. Yeah, I think basically, as I said, uh, I published a few books, poetry books, but I, I wrote basically more than that. I have still a lot of, lot of lots of poems uh, in Bengali, I've written in Bangladesh. And so most, of, most of those poems, I was basically like literary poems means abstract. So, you know, so then basically when I was thinking about writing this book uh, and before I had experience to read other writers book, like I was talking about the partition of uh, India, India partition of 1947. 
So like there are other writers who wrote about those projects on time. Like the, the, there are some writers who left India, went to Pakistan, like Sada, there's a, a storyteller, Sadat or some, some Manto. But or other writers they, uh, who came from Pakistan to India, they wrote about their life and I, 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 read, I read them before, but I didn't know uh, I was going to basically for, uh, going to join in a journey, maybe in the same way. And yeah, but as I said, I wrote a lot of abstract poem that I basically like to write a lot. And when I tried, when I was thinking, oh, I'm going to write this book, I'm going to document, I'm going to document my first few years in this book. And uh, so then basically I was trying to write as like open I can, as easy a story, as realistic I can, but maybe I cannot do more than realistic things because as I said, <laughs> I, I wrote a lot of abstract poems for like 15 years. So this is the most realistic poems I can write. And I for that I added a lot of notes that helped me to uh, put together with the contents or, or other political uh, grand events. Yeah, but it, as you know, so also the topics of this poem or, or other my writings, what I do is a little bit, I think, disturbing elements means like you have to, to deal with it. it. It's not only just fun because like I wrote a novel. So I wrote that for two years and that means for that two years, I was in a psychological uh, stage where I had to always deal with those things and it's very dark. And, uh, but I, I have my way to manage it. I go to park, I talk with my friends, uh, but you know, I do my favorite things like to do. Yeah, but I think- uh, Well, I, I congratulate I you on the, what I really am congratulating you on is the is that no matter how much there is to talk about in each one of these poems, you've created a lot of space around them. They're very, they're very spacious and airy at the same time, which is a really difficult thing to do when you're writing about themes and, and feelings that are so heavy. So I, I, it's a really interesting tension that's going on there that the way in which you present them is, uh, is in, in some ways, um, a kind of way to, um, it's a kind of an affirmative response to an un, uh, uh, to, a, to a kind of difficult or debilitating experience. So it's it, the idea that there's all the space in this room in this to, 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 to live in these poems without feeling weighed down or oppressed by them, um, which is pretty remarkable. Thank you. I think also another thing I am missing or I can still add here, I feel like I feel like I, I am very good with only four liners. I feel sometimes after writing four lines, I feel, oh, it's too much. <laughs> so here are some long poems, but I am basically very good in short poems. And also, as I uh, am basically, I published one book a couple of years ago in, in Bengali, like maybe 2011, and all are basically all were four liners. So after publishing that book, after maybe again six or seven years, then I, again I wrote another series of four liners, but those are not published yet. And then after another five, six years, I wrote another series of four, line, four liners. So yeah, I am very good with, I feel like uh, in a small poems, um, is, is it to craft and try to put as much as you. As you. Yeah, and also I think for poetry, uh, space is very important. This, the space can change totally meaning, meaning you know? And uh, yeah, so. Well, thank you. Um, one of the things I noticed too in the poems that when you read the manuscript all the way through, or when you read the book all the way through, it becomes really clear. Um, Many of the poems, in fact, I counted no less than 28 of the poems in the book, pose a question inside the poem. And yet it's interesting because none of the poems you read today had questions in them that I could see, but 28 of them have at least one question posed in the, well, one of the poems had a question in it that you read, but um, 
uh, 28 of them in the manuscript have questions in them. So I'm curious, is that something that is a feature of your work in general? Or did you feel that the situation that you were experiencing by being in exile uh, prompted these questions to emerge? Yeah, first of all, one thing is basically, I think I feel uh, I am very uh, good with using punctuation in my Bengali poems. That basically my other colleague, Bengali writers, they says that. Like I use a lot of punctuations and basically I try to finish the sentence. That's my maybe uh, one thing. And maybe that, maybe that came from basically my ed editing and proofreading, you know. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, but it, I used to uh, use a lot of exclamation sign. But for in this book, I basically, uh, Intentionally, basically, I use question mark a lot because there are few things as confused and I do not want to make a statement mm -hmm. about those things. So, and in basically uh, other writings, in, even prose, uh, if a little bit like, you know, tricky, I just keep questions. So, you know, if I keep question, no one can catch me. <laughs> well, it's fascinating that because what you're doing is foregrounding the uncertainty, right? Rather than trying to push. Yes. Um, some sort of conclusion. Which and also like maybe just by reading that question and the uh, surrounding new lines, reader can think something different other than I am just giving a, like a, my statement. I think it's by question, I am also giving like a, some kind of yes or no statement, but then basically it's like, an, it's, it's a different mm. than just saying, putting a full stop. Got it. Nice, thank you. Um, and I have a few more questions, but I also want to make sure I get at questions that might be asked by the audience here. Uh, but um, one of the things I notice is that many of your poems deal with silence. You mentioned the word silence a lot in the in the actual situation of silence that you're in in many of the poems, and that this silence is sometimes unbearable. And so I was wondering if you. Given that many poets spend their lives trying to cultivate silence or get at that, I found this facet like for you, um, many times the silence was a kind of you were trying to flee from the silence or you're trying to get away from it. So I was wondering if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so yeah, I think having a free time or moment of silence in our lives. It's important to write poetry. You can think um, also not only for poetry, other, other maybe uh, generals for like a novel, you need to think and to put on the paper, you need time. Then I'm just thinking about groceries and other things. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but here after coming here, as I said, it is it's for me, uh, it was difficult to connect with other people because I had a language barrier at the time. I, ho I hope I overcome a lot. Uh, even maybe I have still uh, foreign accent <laughs> or alien accent. Uh, you have but very strong English. Very strong English. So. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, and basically, but one thing I was afraid about uh, about like forgetting. Like my home country people can forget me. My friends can forget me. Uh, my cares can forget me. Like after coming here, uh, I didn't totally understand. I understand, like I thought my cat uh, can or could remember me. I didn't understand the cat's brain doesn't work that way. And I, I was talking with my uh, family members one day and they uh, kept, kept the cat like on the camera and she didn't know me totally. And I was, but before that I was getting through pain and basically I then realized, okay, she doesn't get that pain, I'm good now. <laughs> but as I said, my family, uh, our friends or anyone, I was uh, afraid about people can forget me also, you know. So that is a one thing, for that, for that also I wanted to write this book. And after, I, after writing this long time, now like four or five years, when I read these things, and I feel like a little bit uh, comfort, oh, I wrote this thing, this, these are not uh, going to lose. Yeah, so if you see there's a poem like, poem uh, 15 in the book, 
Yes. It was like a totally different poem. It, and like I was, as I said, I was at home. I feel like I have no one to meet tonight. Uh, it's dark too much outside. It's being dark uh, early. And I didn't have that experience in Bangladesh. And uh, then I, I started walking on the street, but I totally like saw this imaginary, you know? So, and as I said, Bangladeshi poems are very uh, imaginary and also lyrical. So maybe you can get that from this, my board too. And you mentioned, yeah, but, oh, oh God. But as I, as I said, uh, yeah, silence is, I think, hard. Yeah, it's feel, yeah, I don't wanna be uh, captured by silence. I wanna be with my friends, uh, with my writing, uh, everything, you know, what a normal person wants. But I also, I need my, my own time to write <laughs> for my day, you know, so that's different. So yeah, silence is, a, is, a, is an enormous concept, right? And there are some ways in which you welcome it and other ways in which it's it's kind of the nightmare, right? Of yeah. being forgotten or erased. Um, I do notice you have, you mentioned poem 15, which is one of my favorites. And you have a wonderful uh, quatrain there, a four line poem, there, a section there where you say, I wander in the streets and consider signing a defense pack with the ambassador of silence. And it's one of the rare moments in the book where I see you being um, sardonic or sarcastic. Uh, or yeah, it also like a compromising each other. Like, hey, silence, don't give me hard time. Yeah. Just go it together, something like that, you know? For that, when I walk on the street, I have the silence, but I feel like the silence is walking behind me now as a friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some yes. kind of comfort like that. Thank you. Um, a couple more questions and then I'll open it up to everyone else. Um, actually, just I'll ask one more and then I'll go to everyone else here. And that is um, another thing that you have in a lot of the poems are, and you alluded to this a little bit when you were explaining one of them today. Uh, and that is a lot of the poems are kind of built around conversations that you're having with people. Um, whether the conversation is something that's been ongoing before the poem even began, such as in, I uh, believe one of the first poems that begins with the word and suggests, oh yeah, poem number two, where it says, and then I did leave my country, suggesting that there's been some sort of conversation even before that. Uh, but a lot of them are outright dialogue going on in the poems. I was wondering if you could speak to that. Yeah, if, as I said, this book has a, like a uh, entrance poem, an exit poem, that means like I am starting from the Bangladesh, when I decided to leave, and then basically, and second poem is, and then I did leave my country. I, I am in basically, uh, I was at uh, Abu Dhabi airport. Then I, in the third poem, I am at Pittsburgh and out of the Fort Pitt tunnel. So then basically it started my apartment, then basically weather. It's sort of like a, you know, a script, I think. It's like a, some kind of a script uh, I tried to write, and it has a continuous, uh, reality, what I was trying to uh, understand. Also, as you know, I feel like writing also, by, by my writing, I also try to understand my life too. Uh, it doesn't mean I write other people's, that means I understand their life or not. By, by writing, I also try to understand my life for a lot of questions and I try to examine them later. Yeah, so I, I was thinking when I writing a book, it could be a conversation with uh, other people conversation with myself, like conversation with something, uh, someone inside me, I don't know even, you know. Also conversation with, I was talking about a lot of parks. Uh, you can see a lot of park there uh, because there is a huge park here. It saved my life, I feel. So, yeah, but you know, any kind of writing, I feel like you are uh, just somehow, somehow it's in the head. Maybe, maybe not, <laughs> but you just get the chunk of your writing, it's on the paper, done. You go for next one. <laughs> I feel so, I feel that that thing maybe in like a broader view is not a, like a something maybe established theory, but I feel that like, oh, I, like currently I'm trying to write a novella, 
and I'm feeling, oh, this there, I'm going to just cut, take it. It's like a part, a part of your uh, biography. Like it's a part of your biography, you know? So I'm, I am also now writing the uh, next, uh, what I can say, sequel, sequel of this book and trying to cover what I need to write more now. Like that, like I can see, I, I talked about a uh, oak tree in front of my uh, apartment. And basically that day I was looking into it and it basically became bigger. <laughs> so then basically I was writing a poem about it. Oh, that oak tree is now bigger now, something like that. So I'm going to basically doing a lot of uh, connection with this, this book and, and also the next book. So yeah, is that my question? Did I answer or I did I another? I think, it, I think you did a great job. Thank you. Okay. And I, I want to make sure though, because there, there is a question in here, and I would like uh, for uh, someone to be able to have. Uh, it says here, um, I would like to know how do you manage your emotional health while you are away from your home country? And this is from an anonymous attendee. Yeah, it's hard. Uh, Managing is hard, and uh, I feel after coming here, I was like, "Oh, I am in America, and uh, you know, and I'm doing going to do this, do that." And I was so busy with writing, doing programs, making friends, uh, going to the uh, ESL school to learn English, uh, developing my uh, workforce <laughs> to get a daytime job because I do not make that money by <laughs> writing, you know. So, yeah, so it was hard, uh, like, but it basically became extremely tough when pandemic uh, did hit because I felt like, oh, these three, four years, what I built, everything is looking now going west. Our life became totally valueless. People are dying. And we even like don't see each other. It was a really tough time. And that, that 2020 and 2021, this two year were basically very uh, mentally hard for me. And uh, now I am better now, I think. And, uh, but uh, that's hard because you, you know, like if I, I cannot meet, meet with my family or there are other loved ones in my life, I cannot meet with them. It's hard, but uh, I have no other way. I need to go through it. And yeah, and also I feel uh, writing sometimes helps me. It is a, some kind of a healing for me. I write, and like there are more things I write, but I do not publish. There are like more, a lot of things I write. I do not publish everything. So that helps me for just putting on the paper somewhere. You know, that's not inside me and I am feeling and I am just, um, like forming, you know? So that one way I do writing about my, all the anxiety. And also I get supported from my, uh, some friends by overseas to talk about like uh, WhatsApp or any kind of like app. And yeah, like they help me a lot, give me mental support. And also I have other friends here and they help me with a lot of uh, support here. Yeah. I can't, I mean, just to going through some of the things that reading some of the, the transitions you had to make um, in exile, just that's, that's a lot for anybody. So I'm glad that you have some of that support here. Um, uh, there is another question from Pravin Wilkins. Uh, Pravin asks, um, in which writing genre or form uh, do you feel most comfortable or in your element, poetry, fiction, or nonfiction? Yeah, I am a liter literary writer, so uh, I like to write basically poems at first, then uh, I like basically novel, uh, though I, I wrote one novel only. I wrote uh, a few short stories, like 30 short stories in Bengali, but I basically don't want to put much time into short stories. I wrote those basically for fun or I was thinking I need to write. Some are political, uh, but I feel I, after I, I wrote one novel uh, in this residency 
between 2016 and 2018 is about Bangladesh. And I have a plan to write basically the second part that will start from here, something like that. But now I feel basically uh, I'm interested in writing poetry and basically novel or novella. So I am basically thinking of writing a novella right now. I'm thinking for a long time. <laughs> it's difficult to find out uh, that silence and time, you know. But I am determined I will write this year. And yeah, so novel and poetry, I am both basically comfortable. And although I write a lot of uh, articles for magazines, yeah, but mostly I write lit literary things, novel and poetry. Thank you. Um, Dan, do we have time for one more question? Oh, yep, he just wrote it as I asked it. We have time for one more question. Um, and I guess we'll ask um, from the great Alison Myers of Fighters and Books here. She asks, um, did you have an audience in mind as you were writing the manuscript? I guess, let me, let me riff on this one a little bit. You wrote it originally in Bengali. So yes. were you writing this with the audience in mind that you might be writing this for people at home? Or did you always knew it was going to be translated? Uh, I, I knew kind of it would be translated, but uh, I think uh, I needed to write at first. I just need to go through. Uh, I was going through this. And I need, as I said, also writing is some kind of healing for me. So I needed to write. But yeah, that this book is not published in Bangladesh. This poetry uh, is, is totally translated and published in translation first, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Though here are a few poems I am trying to publish in Bangladesh, uh, but I knew basically it's going to be publishing basically in the Western countries that I basically understood already. So, but as I said, uh, I just wrote for myself at first, you know. Then basically I wanted to, uh, that's the true, but really I wanted to share with other people, means my readers or editors publishers and I wanted to share my writings because by that I can be connected. You know, that's, that's also purpose of art. I can be connected with other people. I can share my thoughts and it was tough. Like, as I said, I wrote this book in between 2016 and 2018. So that means uh, then to I basically edited this book from between 2018 to, uh, between 2018 and 2020, I edited this book. And then it, it got published. So that means this book total took almost six years to get at this uh, result or at this position, you know, so, um, yeah, so- originally, I, I, though, originally though, you were writing for yourself, uh, but then as, it, as the project progressed, you began to think of all these other considerations. Yes. That's- Fascinating, thank you. And it, in some ways, the the duration it took to finish the book allowed you to bring in more considerations. Interesting. Um, well, two in the, that was was wonderful. So thank you so much. It's the second time I've gotten to see you read through writers and books, and I fell in love with your work that first reading. And I've been it's been such a it's been such a wonderful um, experience this last spring reading your book. Um, and I'm just so glad that I had this time to talk to you about it. Thank you, Tony. Uh, it was a great conversation with you. Um, I got, uh, I think, a lot of good questions. And <laughs> so I like your uh, critics, I think, yeah. Yeah, um, well, thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Dan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tuan and uh, Tony. Uh, this was wonderful. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for coming. Uh, buy the book. The link is in the chat. Uh, you can go to our website, wab.org, for more information. Uh, and I want to say thank you and have a great night. Thank you so much. Keep in touch, Tuan. <laughs>